<laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Dan Lopez here, uh, your host for episode number nine of Lunch with Local Legends. Uh, we had a false start there. For some reason, we lost connection, but here we are, re ready to get started. I got my very special guest, Rich Massa, the legendary Rich Massa. <laughs> Before well, he said, only in my mind. But yeah, only, he only in my he mind. I believe it anymore. I, I was actually surprised I got invited to this show. Legends. <laughs> I've known Rich for many, many years. He, uh, I think I first met you. Uh, you were our trainer over at uh, uh, Lifestyle? Yeah, Lifestyle Family Fitness. Okay. The legendary Lifestyle Family <laughs> Fitness. He worked Tina and I to death. But I got to tell you, I was in the best shape of my life back then. Yeah, you, were, you guys were a fantastic client. You guys were dedicated. Um, you guys are strong and you guys are like running marath like uh, like half marathons, five Ks. You're also doing I just remember I actually have, I saw pictures on my on my laptop. I'm gonna have to share them on your on your Facebook page. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good times. I was a much younger man back then. A much stronger younger man back then. <laughs> you know, you I used to call him handsome Dan. Every time he came in, he's just so striking. <laughs> <laughs> but recently you've done a lot more since then. Um, I've been seeing you a lot at the uh, the Seminole Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And, um, and I've been seeing a lot of uh, – Rich has his own show. What, what's the name of your show? Uh, right now it's the Rich Master Show, yes. you know, because I'm great at branding. There you go. And uh, It really is, actually. <laughs> and, uh, we, I will be expanding that to uh, – my, my company name is uh, Powered Man Coaching, so we're going to be uh, actually extending that brand uh, to people on iTunes. It's going to be uh, the Powered Up Podcast. Okay. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm, tell, I'm teaching people – um, how to become, uh, I'm teaching them self-development, self-mastery, self-discipline, okay. and then that way, you know, discipline is freedom. And we're coming up on the most important part of the year, which is New Year's resolutions. Oh, uh, yeah. That's why I thought it would be a good idea to have you come on here. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I, I definitely know my help is needed. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Now, you kind of have a quote that you like to say, um, uh, something about uh, New Year, why we suck at New Year's resolutions. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> well, yes. I wanna, I'm here to t uh, for, for Dan's show on the, the Lunch with Legends uh, uh, in Lake Mary, is that why people suck at New Year's resolutions. This actually yeah. goes to a Harvard study. Harvard did a study that, 92% of people mm -hmm. that set a New Year's resolutions actually fail at their New Year's resolutions. Wow. And 50% give up within two weeks. So I said, okay, why? I started developing programs, but I first wanted to know why does this happen? Why does only 8% succeed? And it doesn't mean that people that don't set a New Year's resolution don't see some results, say, in the first month or two or three months. But it's not a lasting change. Only 8% see their year, uh, their year goal through. Okay. Well, what is it? What is the difference that carries on from 2018, and how can we see substantial change in 2019? So it's um, it's a tradition. Worldwide, people want to change their lifestyle, uh, and they just they they have a hard time doing it. Okay, I just I take a minute here. I just want to say hello to Bob Reese, to Joe Bustios, to Kerry Collins, and to Greg Gary. Thank you for coming on board. If you have any questions at all for Rich, uh, please feel. Free to, uh, to you know type away, chime in, and uh, uh, once again we're here with Rich Massa. We're going to be talking about why people suck at New Year's resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying that over and over again. <laughs> well, it sticks in your head. I, do suck. I did this one segment on my show is why you suck at Mondays. All right, so let's just take that that principle is if you're if you have Sunday fun day, yeah, right, and you have Saturday night and Friday night, and then you come up and you start complaining that Mondays suck. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mondays don't suck. You suck at Mondays. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the New Year's resolution. So yeah. you're saying 90% fail the resolution altogether and 50% fail within the first two weeks. They give up within the first two weeks. Okay. And now I hear that and, okay, you know, I can understand that. And, and, and uh, I guess my concern is just because the, the statistics aren't very appealing – uh, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do them, though, right? Absolutely not. No, it's it's kind of like uh, a lot of people fail. Let's take uh, since I was your uh, trainer at one time. Yep. Let's take weight loss, yep. right? Just because you have never found a, a a system for you doesn't mean you don't keep looking for that system. Right. You just haven't found what works for the individual. Okay. Right. So just why not take what works for the eight percent, study it, and start applying that. So it doesn't mean just because ninety two percent of people don't. Uh, aren't successful at them, or what we view as success, mm -hmm. doesn't mean we don't keep on exploring how to make this work. Okay. So have you set any New Year's resolutions for yourself? I said, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, no, uh, here, here's what I do. I, I'm in this um, 
what I do this time of year is I take the last week of the year and I encourage everybody to do this is uh, I assess what I've done throughout this year. Gotcha. I want to create awareness, right? So how can I know where I want to go if I don't know where I'm at? Right. So number one is I, I, I write down on one page what did all the accomplishments that I, I make that I'm proud of okay. and what did I, what marks did I not hit? But also, um, where do I see myself going? And I start really doing an assessment period this, this time of year. All right. You know, what did I like that I did? What I, what I don't, I like, what could I have done better Then that? What that does, it, it gets the, the muscle moving mm -hmm. or it, it creates awareness. And then that way, okay, now I see what I did. I could have done this better, this better, this better. Now I can start setting up some, 30 days, 60 day, and 90 day goals for 2019. Do you do you um, uh, beat yourself up if you haven't necessarily met a goal from the previous year? No, I, I used to do that a lot, but, uh, and one thing I don't do with my clients, they actually beat themselves up way more than, than I do. I, I don't believe in beating yourself up. Mm -hmm. You look at, here's what you do. Did I do this or not do it? Okay. There's no good or bad or should or must. When he was like, oh, I should have done that. Then you're out of guilt and you're going to start avoiding the, the discomfort of, okay, did I do it or not? You're going to just make up an excuse. Right. But if you just say, okay, I did it or I didn't do it. Why didn't I do it? Mm -hmm. Was there a success system in place? Was, did something come up? Then you can really start taking ownership of it and then you're in control of it. But if you put yourself in a guilt position, it's never going to happen. So I, I don't beat myself up. It's either I didn't, and if I didn't do it, why didn't I do it? Good. Good stuff. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of comments here. Great attitude. Thanks, Greg. Uh, good stuff. Thanks, Billy. And then uh, Carrie Collins looking at the, uh, what are the 8% doing to be successful? That's a great question. And yep. what is that from? Carrie. Carrie, yep. Carrie, uh, what the 8% are doing is they set up a plan. And what I mean by that is they're doing what I'm doing now. First, they assess, right? If you don't have an assessment period, you can't see what habits are working for you and what habits are not working. If you don't take a second, it's kind of like if you're if you're on a road trip, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as guys, sometimes we don't want to ask for directions, Never. right? No. But if you could just take a second, enough. look at look at you, look ask Siri, <laughs> where are you at? Mm -hmm. Then you can say, all right. What they do is they set up short-term goals and long-term goals but the the number one thing that they do is they set up a weekly schedule and then daily method of operations what are they doing in the morning what are they doing in the evening and they chunk their time according to whatever goals are going to get them uh, i'm sorry whatever's going to get them there fastest mm -hmm. they're going to set up the, their goals accordingly okay. so that's what they're doing they're assessing right they're setting up a strategy, and then they're executing a goal through their weekly routine and daily method of operations. And by setting the strategy, basically what you're doing, you're breaking it down into small parts. You know, right. You've got your main goal here. In order to get there, you have to accomplish one, two, three, four, or five items. Right. So they kind of become um, sub-goals, basically. Right. And then they, they, exactly. They, they, they're big on chunking their time mm -hmm. in the most productive times during the day, and also... Um, what are the most productive actions that are going to take into the goal the fastest? Okay. And a lot of people don't do that. Like, like, like again, the easiest thing is let's take money, right? I want to make an extra thousand dollars a month, sure. right? Well, are you, if you're in sales, are you making extra sales calls? Mm -hmm. Are you getting better? Are you reading a book on it? Are you taking a course on it? Uh, but if you, if you're not doing that now and taking, doing that assessment and taking that ownership, you're not going to put that in the plan for the next year. How can I get better at making money? I like it. All right. Um, so what would, what are some of the top changes people are looking to make as we head, as we're heading into the new year? The, the, the ones I'm getting asked for the most are three things. Mm -hmm. They want to definitely weight loss. Well, weight loss is always up there. It's <laughs> always up there. I can't get away from it. I can't get away from it, but you know, it keeps, it, it keeps the, you know, uh, my rent being paid, you know, <laughs> yes. but, uh, what people don't understand about weight loss is it's a, it's a result of your lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? So it's weight loss, definitely money and relationships. Okay. And what I say is if you get a better, better relationship with yourself, which is uh, within your daily disciplines, you're going to have a better relationships with your significant other, with your family. Uh, but you have to allow the time for it. Like uh, a lot of successful people, nighttime is time with their family time with socializing, time with for their relationships. Okay. So they get all their stuff in the uh, in the middle, uh, in the um, the top of their day so they have time for their family at night. Sure. That's success, not wealth, 
but success. So it's, I would say weight loss, money, and um, relationships. And sometimes more money can, get, can give you better relationships, right? Yes, Not especially with your significant other. <laughs> your significant other, for sure. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Yes, yes. I'm learning that the hard way, man. And I'm not married. <laughs> I figure that one out. Well, you do have a child. Yes, I do. Yes. I have a beautiful little girl. I'm a, a new dad. Uh, she's nine months old. Awesome. Me and the daughter's mother, we're, we're, we're getting along great because we just see – you know, I'm a statistics guy. When I see when the, the dad's not around, mm -hmm. that they're increased likelihood for, for going to jail or going to drugs. I made it. You know, I'm a, and I'm Italian, as if you can't tell. Um, I, I'm, I'm big on the, <laughs> the father has to be there. And it doesn't mean, uh, uh, you know, women can't do the job on, uh, you know, they do an amazing job if they're a single mom. But mm -hmm. being from a, a, a deeply family-oriented person like me, there was no way I couldn't like we have to come to a middle ground. We're becoming great friends and we're raising our daughter together, making the best decisions possible. Very cool. Very nice. Well, I, I, I've seen pictures of your little one. I haven't seen her in person yet, but uh, congratulations on that. She she is uh, the happiest baby you'll ever meet. Nice. Yes. She, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. I don't know how you're smiling. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where she gets it from. <laughs> right. <laughs> so how long have you lived in Florida? I've lived in Florida for 20 years now. I, I, I drove down from New Jersey in 1998, yeah. and anyone who's lived in Jersey and now in Florida, they, you know what I mean you know, of you don't want to go back. Or you make the drive, and you never. You, you, it's a nice place to visit. Yeah. Uh, the, the food in Jersey and New York is unparalleled. But you come here, and you get the weather and the lower the cost of living yeah. and the people. Everyone from there is coming here anyway. Right. Right? Lower insurance, no income tax. Yes. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Yeah, it's just a better place to, if you want to build a family, this is the place you want to do it, I would say. Now, I do want to get back to the resolution, but before yes. I do, I want to continue on with uh, what makes you an expert and authority to be able to speak on this on this subject. So so you moved here 20 years ago. Yeah, okay. So, so you were originally from the uh, Northeast, and and um, when you first came to Florida, were you already in working as a trainer, working as a motivational speaker, what were you doing? Well, I was motivating. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I was an ex Jehovah's Witness, former stripper Buddhist. <laughs> okay. So, so what does that mean? <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness in Jersey, but I came down here and I got a job as a male dancer. I think I, I used to tell you this, I think, when we were personal training. But uh, I wasn't coaching yet, but we were an entertainment group. It wasn't like the traditional, we actually had to put on a show. We had one guy who used to sing live on stage. These guys would do, uh, they would do uh, martial arts and gymnastics on stage. It was, it was incredible. Okay. And then you had me, mm -hmm. you know, which I had to bring something. But I have a love for the stage. But I always, I actually coached uh, some of the guys in nutrition. I always loved coaching people, passing on my knowledge. Yeah. So when I retired, uh, I actually got into, before I retired, I got into a bad car accident and I got really into how the body works. How can you get motivated? How can you come back from a tragedy like that? Cause it broke my whole body up. Mm. That's when I started really studying personal training and coaching and, and, uh, uh, I became one of the top trainers in, ja uh, in Jacksonville, mm. uh, with lifestyle family fitness. Okay. And then I hit a divorce, uh, me and my, we just had different life goals. So we sure. divorced and I moved down here. And I became a, a pretty well-known trainer here. I started a boot camp. Yeah. So I've been. The, what makes me an expert is I've been coaching for 14 years. I've coached over a thousand people. I was a personal trainer. I did uh, boot camps, but also I got really into self-development. Went on a spiritual journey to kind of heal myself mm -hmm. from the tragedies I faced. When I started giving these uh, other strategies other than fitness. Their life started to change, not just their fitness change. Their weight came off. They, 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 they got the courage to either start their own business or go for that relationship. So I said, okay, I need to develop a system to have this duplicatable. Okay. So that's when I started going into uh, Eastern philosophies, Greek philosophy. Uh, I started studying successful people, warrior training. What exactly did they do? What times did they do it? And I implemented it in the program I'm doing now. Okay. Are there, do you find there to be more more uh, likenesses and the differences as, as you're studying the different uh, areas of it? There's actually more similarities. Like okay. uh, I'm seeing a lot of similarity between, uh, let's say, uh, stoicism, which was. I don't know what that uh, is. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't even know what that is. Well, that <laughs> uh, that's that's a part of Greek philosophy. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a big big correlation between that and say Buddhism and Taoism. Okay. And they get up at a certain time. They they believe in emotional discipline. 
They believe a, a motion through non-attachment to love something for what it is, yeah. but also daily discipline and mastering yourself. So you're seeing a lot of this, but how they implement it was very curious of uh, uh, creating awareness and creating, getting out of your own way. Okay. So they had a method to that. So I was like, okay, what if we could implement this into a, a lifestyle program? And when we started doing this in, in my program, people not only lost weight, they started looking younger, they had less stress, they had better relationships. So this is a, an overall lifestyle uh, program that I've developed. Outstanding, well, that's, that's incredible. Okay, so then let's get back to the, the, the three main um, ch changes that people are looking to make then, I guess starting with the weight loss. Um, where, where should we start? Uh, personally speaking, I can probably uh, stand to lose 15, 20 pounds. So if I, if I uh, come to you and say, Rich, what do I need to do? Okay. This is, this is a, 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 a very important question. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. And here's what I would, I would definitely recommend. Okay. Focus on the process, number one. Okay. You have to develop a process that you can do after you lose this 15 to 20 pounds. Okay. Right? So let's say the most common thing, the, the most common goal is weight loss. Yeah. What people typically do is they focus on, let's say 20 pounds, that's most, the most common. I gotta lose 20 pounds, I gotta lose 20 pounds, I gotta lose 20 pounds, mm -hmm. right? What I recommend, let's say that's a 90 day goal. Okay. Don't focus on the 90 days, Fo chunk it into a 30 day goal. Gotcha. How much, and I would say, let's go for 30 to 40%, right? I'm gonna lose eight pounds this month, and that's all you focus on. Okay. Number two is you wanna focus on a process that's going to work. See, weight loss is, a, and even money, is a side effect mm -hmm. based on your process. So first come up with a, a goal, but then come up with a system. When are you going to work out? Mm -hmm. What foods, 80% of this is nutrition. What foods are you going to eat? If you don't know how to do it, get a coach or get a book and then read it every single day. So come up with a goal, strategize the goal, and then execute it daily. And the biggest thing I could say people should do, Dan, According to Brian Tracy, he's a self-development leader. Mm -hmm. For every hour that you plan, you save 10 hours and you increase the chance of doing it. So I would take Sunday night for an hour and plan what you're going to do. Like when are you going to work out? Where are you going to work out? And do it the night before. If you do that, you're ahead of the game from, from, the, from the 8% that, that, uh, the, that pass their, their New Year's resolutions. I love it. And I love what you just said there. It's a side effect. So basically, you're making a lifestyle change of some sort. Um, and, and the weight loss just sort of happens because of, of the changes that you're, that you're uh, implementing. That's, that's very, exactly it. Very doable changes. Here's what you want to do. Yeah. Picture the person that you want to be. Mm -hmm. Say it's a person that's 20 pounds lighter and makes $10,000 more a year, right? First, you picture it. Then you start writing down what does this person do to achieve that? All right. And you start, you, you already know what to do, right? Once you start doing that and you start doing what that person already does, like this is the food that person eats. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, how this person makes money. I'm going to start doing that now. You grow into that person and now it's a lifestyle. You'll never have to lose that weight again because now it's a part of you, what you're doing daily. I love it. All right. And like you said, and, and the same holds true really for the next two uh, challenges as well, making more money and, and establishing better relationships, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one thing. Uh, I helped this, uh, a few people get a promotion at work, okay. right? And how I did with that was, uh, again, about relationships. What they go, I deserve a, a promotion. I'm like, okay, why don't you go to your superior and say, what three actions do I have to do to ensure a, a promotion in six months? Okay. Go to them and start taking ownership of it and then He'll, that person, he or she, will tell you, do this, this, and this, and guess what you do? You start doing it. Start doing and then in six right. months, you'll probably, you'll at least be on the radar for the person getting a promotion. Let's say you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Are you making sales calls every day? Are you doing, um, if not, are you getting better at it? Do you have a phone script? Are you getting a mentor? I have, I have two business mentors for, for the business. There are always ways to get better and, and, and implement them into your, into your daily routine. So how does a person then mentally make that change? You know, it's it's easy to say it. It's it's easy to make the resolution. Say I want to make this happen. Uh, it's great advice to break it down into smaller, more obtainable parts. But you still gotta. It's almost like a switch. You know, speaking as somebody that uh, uh, has has made goals, uh, achieved goals, I know the difference when I when I do 
make that happen than when I don't. And I, I, I'm not going to pretend like I've accomplished every single goal I ever put my mind to. I have not. Probably have failed just as often as I have succeeded. So what's the difference? I mean, how can you make that? Uh, how? What's the secret to uh, implementing these changes, making sure that you actually do it? That You should be a professional interviewer because you ask, you ask <laughs> amazing questions. I will give you the most powerful, the number one way, okay. and this cuts through all the BS, any books you're going to read, the number one thing you do is decide. Decide, okay. There's nothing more powerful than the power of decision. And I'm not talking about like, maybe I can do this, or I might do that. I'm talking like, I am deciding now this is who I'm going to be. That's yeah. it. There's no wiggle room at, at, after that. That's for sure. I am deciding I'm making 20,000 more dollars. When you make a decision, there's no, like uh, you're, you're creating that. And when you decide that and there's nothing going to stop you, you will figure out a way. This will figure out a way. This will figure out a way to make it happen. But um, until you make an absolute decision, you're always going to find a way out of it. Okay. And the way to do that, let me just follow up if you don't mind. Sure, go right ahead. There's three ways. Is either pain, like say, uh, you mentioned before that you want to lose some weight, right? You have that aha moment. You put on the pants. You have to suck it in. It's that, get, you know? <laughs> it's, that, it's that hundredth time, like, I'm done. I'm done having to suck in, I'm done with the reflection in the mirror, mm -hmm. I'm done with that, right? Another thing is you see someone who you admire, like I want that really bad, that's the desire. So you have the pain mm -hmm. and then you have the pleasure. But when those two meet and you make the decision, like I'm tired of looking this way, or I'm tired of feeling this way, mm -hmm. and I really want that over there, and those two meet, I decide I want that, that's how you get there. You have to go through a pain and pleasure process. Okay, so we touched on the on the weight. We touched on the money. What can you tell me about uh, relationships? You know, um, uh, that's one thing I would have to say. I can give a lot of advice on that, but I think that's one thing everybody, including myself, uh, needs to work on, and, yeah. and it's it's a process. One thing I uh, I'll say the, I'll, I'll be a little vulnerable here. This is what I'm going to be working on: is that relationships are a two way street. Yeah. And what a lot of people do is they either give, 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 or they receive, 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 right? And it has sure. to be a, oh, not an equal amount, but you have to be able to give and take and express to the other person what you want. But the, I would say if they want to improve their relationships, number one, improve their relationship with yourself. Okay. Do actions that love yourself and then love loving other people. Right, but another thing is uh, one book I'm going to be reading this year, or at least listening to, is the Five Love Languages. Okay, right, and um, that's a system too. Like, uh, there's five. There's words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, um, and the other two are, are slipping my mind. Obviously, that's why I need to read the book, right? <laughs> but uh, let's say with men, it's uh, quality time and physical touch, and for your, your significant other, it's uh, gifts. And, and acts of service. But yeah. you always want to spend time with the other person. You're always touching on them like, yo, get, get off me, right? You're not speaking their language, so it's not exactly a two-way street. Right. So to put the effort in that we're both going to do this, what do you want in this relationship? What do I want in this relationship? We're both going to read this book together mm -hmm. and apply it. Then I think you're going to have a better relationship. Very cool. All right. And that's, and that's, and that's part, part of your resolutions for 2000. My resolution is learning to expand how I speak my love languages. Okay. And that Christmas was actually, if anybody saw my pictures on Facebook, my, I'm not a gift giver. I'm a quality time guy, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give gifts this year. I'm going to really put thought into the gifts, and then people loved it. And I loved speaking in their language because their face lit up, mm -hmm. right? So I think, again, just like with the weight loss and the money, it's the effort – of learning the uh, how to express that love language is going to be the key. Very cool. Well, Rich, you are not only a great uh, trainer, not only a great uh, public speaker, but you, um, uh, yeah, you're an incredible motivator. I mean, I knew this about you years ago when I was uh, training under you. You know, like, like I said, that was in the best shape of my life back then. So, and I know you're an entrepreneur. You always got something coming up going yeah. on right now. So, so tell me, you know, what what can we expect from you and the in the next year or so. Oh, well, that this is this is. Uh, I'm glad that you asked to help people 
set their life on fire in 2019. February 23rd at the Rhythm and Smooth event venue, Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm going to give and share my strategies on how to set your life on fire with a winning strategy. Okay, so I'm going to go through my coaching program at a night. The tickets are on sale now. We're selling an early bird special, but I'm also launching a group program called Shock University. See, I have a six uh, a six phase formula called the Shock System. Okay. So right now, I'm working with people one on one, but I'm expanding. I'm, I'm I'm going to be putting a group program online called Shock University, and we're starting with Ignite. We're going to be taking 20 people on at a time and completely rewiring their lifestyle and and shaping. Uh, you know, like I said, firing them up. Outstanding. So that's February 23rd. February 23rd, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. is a Saturday. And uh, and you have a link to this already? You have, you have a site? If you go to therichmessa.com, that's T-H-E. It's the Rich Massa because in my mind, I'm already famous. <laughs> but if you go to therichmessa.com, you will see a link to the event. <laughs> and who's your ideal customer for something like this? You know, I'm looking for somebody. If someone says, I feel, let's say, now I'm not using my words. I feel fat. Okay. Or I feel I like I need a change. I feel I feel something. Mm -hmm. They come to me. Okay. I if they're ready for a change, they come to me. I'm their lifestyle coach. Very cool. Okay. And then you still got your podcast going on, right? Yes. Uh, we're starting every Wednesday is gonna, uh, on Hump Day. I'm going to be doing the Rich Massa Live Show. That's also going to be the Powered Up Podcast. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be able to find that on Facebook and on iTunes. Very cool. And what are you doing for New Year's? Um, I'm not going to be drinking because I did that on New Year's Eve, <laughs> and I'm still paying the price for that. Well, Christmas Eve, you mean? Yeah, Christmas, I'm sorry, Christmas Eve. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to celebrate New Year's Eve as heavily as I did Christmas Eve. Oh, you get an attaboy then. Yes. You're going you're to hit the ground running in, in 2019. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Rich, I really appreciate you coming on board here today. Uh, a lot of good stuff. You're, you're an incredible guy, a lot of fun to be around, uh, great motivator, good speaker. Um, and uh, I look forward to you know to seeing what you accomplish in 2019. And we'll love to have you back on. Soon. Well, absolutely, Dan. Thanks for having me on the show. And make make sure you guys fire up 2019. Outstanding. Everybody have a great day, and uh, I'll, we'll see you next year in 2019.